Once there was a little mouse. He was a busy mouse, searching everywhere, touching his whiskers to the grass and looking. He was busy as all mice are, busy with mice things, but occasionally he would hear an odd sound. He would lift his head, squinting hard to see, his whiskers wiggling in the air, and he would wonder. One day he scurried up to a fellow mouse and asked him, Do you hear a roaring in your ears, my brother? No, no, answered the other mouse, not lifting his busy nose from the ground. I hear nothing. I'm busy. Talk to me later. He asked another mouse the same question, and the mouse looked at him strangely. Are you foolish in the head? What sound? He asked and slipped into the hole of a fallen cottonwood tree. The little mouse shrugged her whiskers and busied himself again, determined to forget the whole matter. But there was that roaring again. It was faint, very faint, but it was there. One day, he decided to investigate the sound just a little, leaving the other busy mice. He scurried a little away and listened again. And there it was. He was listening hard when suddenly someone said, Hello. Hello, little brother, the voice said. And Mouse almost jumped right out of his skin. He arched his back and tail and was about to run. Hello, again, said the voice. It is I, Brother Raccoon. And sure enough, it was. What are you doing here all by yourself, little brother? Asked the raccoon. The mouse blushed and put his nose almost to the ground. I hear a roaring in my ears and I am investigating it, he answered timidly. A roaring in your ears, replied the raccoon as he sat down with him. What you hear, little brother, is the river. The river? The mouse asked curiously. What's a river? Walk with me and I will show you the river, raccoon said. Little mouse was terribly afraid, but he was determined to find out once and for all about this roaring. I can return to my work, he thought, after this thing is settled, and possibly this thing will aid me in all of my busy examining and collecting. And my brothers all said it was nothing. I will show them. I will ask Raccoon to return with me, and I will have proof. All right, Raccoon, my brother, said the mouse. Lead me on to the river. I will walk with you. Little mouse walked with the raccoon. His little heart was pounding in his breast. The raccoon was taking... Him upon strange paths, and Little Mouse smelled the scent of many things that had gone by his way many times. He became so frightened that he almost turned back. Finally, they came to the river. It was huge and breathtaking, deep and clear in places and murky in others. Little Mouse was unable to see across it because it was so great. It roared, sang, and cried, and thundered on its course. Little Mouse saw great and little pieces of the world carry along its surface. It is powerful, Little Mouse said. Well, Duke, goodness gracious, buddy. It is powerful, Little Mouse said, fumbling for words. It is a great thing, answered Raccoon. But here, let me introduce you to a friend. In a smoother, shallower place was a lily pad, bright and green. Sitting upon it was a frog, almost as green as the pad it sat on. The frog's white belly stood out clearly. Hello, little brother, said the frog. Welcome to the river. I must leave you now, cut in Raccoon. But do not fear, little brother, for frog will take care of you now. And Raccoon left, looking along the river, bank for food that he might wash and eat. Little Mouse approached the water and looked back into it. He saw a frightened mouse reflected there. Who are you, Little Mouse? asked the reflection. Are you afraid of being that far out into the great river? No, answered the frog. I am not afraid. I have been given the gift from birth to live both above and within the river. When winter man comes and freezes this medicine... I cannot be seen, but all the while Thunderbird flies, I am here to visit me. One must come when the world is green. I, my brother, am the keeper of the water. Amazing, Little Mouse said at last, again fumbling for words. Would you like to have some medicine power, the frog asked. Me? Medicine power? asked the little frog. Yes, yes, if possible, 
Then crouch as low as you can and then jump as high as you are able. You will have your medicine, Frog said. Little Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could and jumped. And when he did, his eyes saw the sacred mountain. Little Mouse could hardly believe his eyes. But there they were. But then he fell back to the earth. And he landed in the river. Little Mouse became frightened and scrambled back to the bank. He was wet and frightened nearly to death. You have tricked me, Little Mouse screamed at the frog. Wait, said the frog. You are not harmed. Do not let your fear and anger blind you. What did you see? I, the mouse stammered, I saw the sacred mountains. And you have a new name, Frog said. It's Jumping Mouse. Thank you. Thank you, Jumping Mouse said, and thanked him again. I want to return to my people and tell them that this thing has happened to me. Well, go then, <coughs> Frog said. Return to your people. It's easy to find them. Keep the sound of the Medicine River to the back of your head. Go opposite of the sound and you will find your brother mice. <coughs> Jumping Mouse returned to the world of mice. But he found disappointment. No one would listen to him. And because he was wet and had no way of explaining it because there had been no rain, many of the other mice were afraid of him. They believed he had been spat on from the mouth of another animal that had tried to eat him. And they all knew that if he had not been food for the one who wanted him, then he must also be poison for them. Jumping Mouse lived again among his people, but he could not forget the vision of the sacred mountains. The memory burned in the mind, in the heart of the Jumping Mouse. And one day he went to the edge of the place of mice and looked out into the prairie. He looked up for eagles. The sky was full of many spots, each one an eagle, but he was determined to go to the sacred mountain. He gathered all his courage and ran just as fast as he could onto the prairie. His little heart pounded with excitement and fear. He ran until he came to a stand of sage. He was resting and trying to catch his breath when he saw an old mouse. The patch of sage old mouse lived in was a haven for mice, seeds and many things to be busy with. Hello, said old mouse. Welcome. Jumping Mouse was amazed. Such a place and such a mouse. You are truly a great mouse, Jumping Mouse said with respect that he could find. All of the respect that he could find. This is truly a wonderful place and the eagles can't see you here either, Jumping Mouse said. Yes, the old mouse said the old mouse. Yes, and you can see all the beings of the prairie here. The buffalo, antelope, rabbit, coyote. One can see them all from here and know their names. That is marvelous, Jumping Mouse said. Can you also see the river and the great mountains? Well, yes and no, Old Mouse said with conviction. I know the great river, but I am afraid that the great mountains are only a myth. Forget your passion and see them and stay here with, to see them and stay here with me. There is everything you would want here. It's a good place to be. How can he say such a thing? thought Jumping Mouse. The medicine of the sacred mountains is nothing one can forget. Thank you very much for the meal you've shared with me, old mouse, and also for sharing your great home, Jumping Mouse said, but I, I must seek the mountains. You are foolish mouse to leave. There is no, there is danger on the prairie. Just look up there, old mouse said with even more conviction. See all them spots? They're eagles, and if they catch you, it was hard for Jumping Mouse to leave, but he gathered his determination and ran hard again. The ground was rough, but he arched his tail and ran with all of his might. He could feel the shadows on the spots upon his back as he ran. All those spots. Finally, he ran into a stand of chokeberries. Jumping Mouse could not believe his eyes. It was cool there and very spacious. There was water, cherries, and seeds to eat, grasses to gather for nests, holes to be explored and many other busy things to do and there was a great many things together he was investigating his new domain when he heard a very he heard a very heavy breathing he quickly investigated the, investigated the sound and discovered its source it was a great mound of hair with black horns it was a great buffalo jumping mouse could hardly believe the greatness of the being he saw lying there before him he was so large the Jumping Mouse could have crowded into one of his great horns. 
and crawled right into it. Such a magnificent being, thought Jumping Mouse, and he crept closer. Hello, my brother, said the buffalo. Thank you for visiting me. Hello, great being, said Jumping Mouse. Why are you lying here? I am sick and I am dying, the buffalo said, and my medicine has told me that only the eye of a mouse can heal me. But little brother, there is no such thing as a mouse. Jumping Mouse was shocked. One of my eyes, he thought, one of my tiny eyes? He scurried back into the stand of chokeberries. He scurried back into the ch stand of ch chokeberries, but the breathing came harder and slower. He will die, thought Jumping Mouse, if I do not give him my eye. He is too great of a being to let die. He went back to where the buffalo lay and spoke. I am a mouse, he said with a shaky voice. And you, my brother, are a great being. I cannot let you die. I have two eyes, so you may have one of them. The minute he said it, Jumping Mouse eye flew out of his head, and the buffalo was made whole. The buffalo jumped to his feet, shaking Jumping Mouse's whole world. Thank you, my little brother, said the buffalo. I know of your quest for the sacred mountains and your visit to the river. You have given me life so that I may give away to the people. And I will be your brother forever. Run under my belly and I will take you right to the foot of the sacred mountains. And you need not fear the spots. The eagles cannot see you while you are under me. All they will see is the back of a buffalo. And I am of the prairie. And I, if I was to fall on you, and I would fall on you if I tried to go to the mountains. I am of the prairie. So Little Mouse ran under the buffalo, secure and hidden from the spots, but uh, with only one eye, and it was frightening. The buffalo's great hooves shook the whole world each time he took a step. Finally, they came to the place where the buffalo stopped. This is where I must leave you, little brother, said the buffalo. Thank you very much, said Jumping Mouse. But you know it was very frightening running under you with only one eye. I was constantly in fear of your great earth-shaking hooves. You fear, your fear was for nothing, said the buffalo, for my way of walking is the sun dance way. And I was, and I always knew where my hooves will fall. I now must return to the prairie, my brother. You can always find me there. Jumping Mouse immediately began to investigate his new surroundings. There were even more things to hear than any other places. Busier things and the abundance of seeds and other things mice like. In his investigation of these things, suddenly he ran upon a gray wolf who was sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Hello, brother wolf, said Jumping Mouse. The wolf's ears came alert and his eyes shone. Wolf, wolf, yes, yes, that is me and I am the wolf. But his mind dimmed again and it was not long before he sat quietly again, completely without memory of who he was. Each time Jumping Mouse reminded him who he was, he became excited with the news but soon would forget again. Such a great being, thought Jumping Mouse, but he has no memory. Jumping Mouse went to the center of his new place, and he was quiet. He listened for a long while to the beating of his heart. Then suddenly he made up his mind. He scurried back to where the wolf was, and he spoke. Brother Wolf, Jumping Mouse said. Wolf, Wolf, yeah, yeah, that's me, brother. That's right, Brother Wolf, said, and... and Please listen to me. I, I, I know what will heal you. It's one of my eyes, and I want to give it to you. You are a greater being than I, but you sure are nuts. And I'm just a mouse, so would you please take it? When Jumping Mouse stopped speaking, his eye flew out of his head, and the wolf was made whole. Tears fell down the cheek of the wolf, but little brother could not see them. For now, he was blind. You are a great brother, said the wolf, for now I have my memory, but now you are blind. I am the guide to the sacred mountains. I will take you there. There is a great medicine lake there, the most beautiful lake in the world, and all the world is reflected there, the people, the lodges of the people, and all the beings of the prairie and the skies. Please take me there, Jumping Mouse said. The wolf guided him through the pines to the medicine lake. Jumping Mouse drank the water from the lake. The wolf described all the beauty to him. I must leave you here, said the wolf, for I must return so that I may guide others. But I will remain with you for as long as you like. Thank you, my brother, said Jumping Mouse. But although I am frightened to be alone, 
I know must, you must go to show others the way to this place. Jumping Mouse sat there trembling in fear. He was alone. It was no use running, for he was blind. But he knew an eagle would find him there. He felt a shadow on his back, and he heard the sound the eagles make. He braced himself for the shock, and the eagle hit. Jumping Mouse went to sleep. Then he woke up. The surprise of the surprise of being alive was great. And now I could see. Everything was blurry. But the colors were beautiful. I can see, I can see, said Jumping Mouse over and over again. A blurry shape came towards Jumping Mouse. Jumping Mouse squinted hard, but the shape remained a blur. Hello, brother, a voice said. Do you want some medicine? Some medicine for me, asked Jumping Mouse. Yeah, yeah, then crouch down as low as you can. The voice said, and jump as high as you can. Jumping Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could, and he jumped. The wind caught him and carried him higher. Don't be afraid, the voice called to him. Hang on to the wind and trust. Jumping Mouse did. He closed his eyes and hung on to the wind, and it carried him higher and higher. Jumping Mouse opened his eyes, and they were clear. And the higher he went, and the clearer they, the clearer they became, Jumping Mouse saw his old friend upon the lily pad at the beautiful Medicine Lake. It was the frog. You have a new name, called the frog. You are Eagle. So, Mountain Girl, you started your journey. And that's the whole story of the journey, according to the native people in the United States. And you're going to have to figure out where you are in the journey. Who you are. Who I am. And what all of this stuff means to you. And you're going to figure it out. Trust your heart. And you'll get there.